hey, Fryer Guy here, and we're going to another call. But anyways, this particular rotisserie is a Hobart KA7EM. They're the world's worst rotisseries in my opinion. Um, and this is a common issue, which is it is unevenly heating. Now, the uneven heating can be, you know, a couple of problems. This thing has two elements, um, and it's got a one light in the front, which does nothing. It's just, you know, kind of on. Um, and they have two fans. Um, if the fans aren't spinning in the right direction, that's going to cause an uneven heating problem. Also, if one fan is spinning slower than the other, is going to cause that, or as well as one not working. So we're going to get in there. We're going to look to see if both fans are spinning. If they are spinning, we're going to verify that they are um, going in the right direction. Now, I have nothing to test to see what the count is. So what we'll have to do is we'll have to test the... Uh, um, the capacitors and see if the capacitors are just getting weak and may need to be replaced um, and then we'll also make sure we're testing you know the elements and everything else along with that so with that guys I will see you at the store all right here is the ka7 em rotisserie uh, what we got is we're gonna take the side panel off here there's like 50,000 screws there's two of them usually at the very top and then you have one two three four five on each side plus you got to take these ones off here um, to be able and take these off as well so you can get access to the side panel once we get the access Then I'll show you how to turn this thing on and then uh, Go through the different this actually good thing about this is you can Run each individual thing by itself without having to turn on the whole rotation. If I want to test just the fans I can do it. If I want to test just the elements I can't. If I want to test just the motor I can So I'm gonna go ahead and take this off and then uh, I'll pick up from there Now one of the first things I always do is I always check power so it should be 208 going from these two legs going from L1 to L2, so going from here to here, you know, as well, and then these two as well, making sure I have at least 208 volts. So we got good voltage coming in, and there's obviously power coming into the unit. You can see that flash, and it tells us power's coming into the unit. So now I got this out. I'm going to go ahead, and there's the capacitors. It looks like one had been replaced recently, so that one may be starting to go bad, not allowing the other fan to spin properly. But we'll find out here in a second. So what we're going to go ahead and do now is test the um, display test. So cool things they give you these little instructions that come with the unit. It's supposed to be stick to the side of this, but I'm glad they didn't because they left right here next to the grease pump. It just tells you how to exactly do it. So to get into the diagnostic mode is right here. So if you guys want, go ahead and take note of this. So to access diagnostic checks, turn the power switch off. While holding the keys, keys clock seven, eight, seven, ten, so turn the power switch on. So I'm gonna have to put the phone down and go ahead and use both hands to do this. All right, next, so when that happens, you get flashing P, then you just gotta push two, two, and then you hit uh, switch be enter, enter. Now we're in diagnostic mode. Now you can go ahead and press any of these things here. One will test your lights, two will test the fans clockwise as seen from inside the oven. 3 is the rotor motor, 4 is the contactor, 9 is the uh, grease pump. So what I'm concerned about is going to be checking the fans. So what i got to do is, is I've got to take this front shroud off, but right now I can see the fans clear as day, so I'm not going to drop it just yet. So what I want to go ahead and hit is 2. This fan is spinning, but it's very slow, and this one is not. Which tells me it could be a bad capacitor or a bad fan. So this is the issue. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test these capacitors. Make sure you disconnect the power first to unplug the unit. Uh, and what we gotta do is just, we're gonna test these capacitors. Luckily this one's been replaced before, so it's gonna be easier. All I gotta do is disconnect these uh, uh, caps here. And we're gonna set our meter to um, right here. Sorry, this was the first one here. So uh, we can check the microfarads of these capacitors. Should be reading at least 1.5 around there. Um, if these aren't reading at 1.5, batches may need to be replaced. If they're pretty close, then we can have a bad fan. I have a feeling one of those fans may be bad. On another note, make sure you wait a few minutes before replacing this or discharge them. So if you disconnect these, touch them to like ground to a metal so that way it will remove any stored voltage in those capacitors. 
tested this one out. This is 1.48, or so 1.49 microfarad. So that's still good. This one here is 1.47. So this one's actually still good. Um, so it's looking like the issue is going to be the actual um, fans themselves here. Now one thing you can do to see if it's just not sticking is just try to move it by hand. If it moves really like just like that, then it's free, then it's just going to be a bad motor. And we know this one's free because we saw it spinning. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to go ahead and get a fan and replace the fans and then uh, we'll go from there. All right, now to change these fans, we need to take this off. And we're gonna have to take this whole top panel off. You see it's kind of held in here by these little pins. Once you get it off, this is kind of flexible. That uh, You'll have to um, bend this a little bit, but it'll come off the pins. And these actual nuts, it's kind of hard to see inside these fans here. They're actually left-handed threads. So it's gonna actually be lefty, tidy, righty, loosey. Something else I wanna point out is this right here. This is your temperature probe. Well, when you're in here, go ahead and get something to clean that off so that way it'll read the temperature more accurately. As you can see, I dropped the front panel here and I took the two fans off. Um, to get this panel off here, um, there's like a little lip down here. You need to kind of get that lip and then actually just kind of bend it so that way it will pull back from the clips. Like I said, these pins here, like I said, because it's kind of flexible and then it'll just slide right off. Now to gain access to the fans, you have to take off this whole top panel. So you gotta take like all these screws off. There's like one here. You gotta take the side panel thing off right there. You gotta take all these things off to get access to the fans on these particular rotisseries. Um, you know, so you've got like a screw here and everything. Um, the old HR7Es and HR7s actually had a little cutaway here. So all you gotta do is take off four screws, the whole panel comes off, then you access to the fans. You don't quite have that luxury with the KA7, so you gotta take all this off to get access to the fans. Um, hopefully in the future, I'll show you guys how to do a bottom rotisserie if it's stacked like this unit, because it's complete. It's not completely different, but it's a little bit different in order to do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and start taking all these screws off. Once I get them off, I'll show you guys what the next step is. All right, now, as you can see, I got the top panel off here and you got the tops of the fans. Uh, there's three of these screws here. Uh, sorry, here. There's one here, there's gonna be one back here and there's a new one right here. We gotta go ahead and take those screws off and these should be able to pull out. Um, if you can't pull them out right away on the inside of the uh, unit um, where the fan comes through, you're gonna see like a brass. Let me show you. You see these clips here. So there's a, oh, there's a clip here. You got a little C-clip here. It's missing its little brass piece. This one has the brass piece. Um, they should just slide out. If they don't, you may have to take these off and slide them out. So that little C-clip, it, it will just pop off. Get a little flat head in there, pops off. All right, once you remove the old motor, take a minute and, and try to clean out like this stuff here, you know, um, just scrub it off and stuff. That way it will prevent any oil migration and grease to stick to the fan here and it's can prevent it from turning, um, you know, and potentially burn out the coils in there. Um, once you clean it out, go ahead and install the new motor here um, and it will just slide right in. Again, you may have to take these little clips off here um, to get it in place. If you do, it's no big deal, but then it will just slide into place. So I'm going to go ahead and clean that up real quick and then uh, install the fans and I'll show you how you're supposed to wire them up. Okay, so now I am going to go ahead and wire this up. So here's the new wires. Um, I had to cut and strip the wire myself here and these are the old ones. So just cut the old wires off and then just follow them to this little terminal block and then just uh, replace them here. Now, somebody was here before and worked on one of the fans. This is um, not a bad fix. You can do this, it's fine. I personally don't prefer doing this because it creates a weak spot, a place for it to rust or something like that. So if you can, just go right into the uh, terminal block if possible. Um, again, it's not a bad fix. It's just a personal preference of mine. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this all hooked up properly for this fan and then um, we'll go from there. This is a little side note. To take these wires out of this particular terminal, there's a little tiny, I don't know if you can see it, like a square, uh, to, like right here where the screwdriver's at. Um, to, to get the wire out, all you, you don't have to like push or pry, you actually are, you know, pull or pry it. You just have to press down and it will actually loosen the connection, so I can just one-handed. You just push down and it will uh, wedges and let it come out. I'm trying to do it one hand here. Five. Yes. 
All right. There we go. And there you go, it comes out. So just, just push down the small screwdriver and this will pop right out. In case you're wondering where the wires go, the black wire from the, for the fans go on number five, the brown wires go to number 12, and the blue wires go to number 13. So it's five, 12, 13, right? So, and the other fan, the one that has been wire nutted, which I'm gonna go ahead and take care of, um, just goes on the terminal behind it. It's still number five, I'm trying to loosen these wires. It's still number five, it's just directly behind it. And then I'll probably go ahead and direct connect the, uh, the um, uh, capacitors. Yes, the orange ones was my doing here, but so I'm gonna try. I can't guarantee it's gonna be able to be easy to do. But that's still, like I said, that's still just a good fix. All right. Okay, just wanna point something else out. So the one fan was five, 12, 13. The other fan is actually five, 11, 13. So you have two brown wires right here in the front. So the number 11 is for the fan that is, uh, if you're looking at the unit to the right. So that's gonna be that fan. Just a little side note, make sure you guys zip tie um, the wires together, especially like on units where it has a, like the wires going past the element. Because if you don't, these wires will touch the elements here and it will melt and damage the wires. And that can, you know, be avoided just by zip tying them all together. It doesn't have to be always zip tied a lot of times, you know, I know we have to cut them off and stuff like that, but for something like this where it's next to an element, zip tie them out of the way. Hey guys, just a quick tech tip here for you. Um, when you have to put a bunch of screws in back on to something like this, it doesn't matter what it is, fryer, hot case, rotisserie, you gotta put a bunch of screws in. Um, get the screws in the holes first and keep them loose so that way you can adjust the panel around so that way all the holes line up. Because if you start tightening down the screws before you get them all in, you're gonna see like one or two screws are not gonna line up properly. So make sure they're all loose first. Get all the screws started. And once you get them started, then you can start go ahead and tightening them all down. All right, so I went ahead and replaced the fans. I can't use the new fan blades because the ones they sent me were too small, so I gotta use the old fan blades. I went ahead and cleaned the probe here. Um, now I'm gonna go ahead and test it, make sure it works. Um, and then we will go from there. Remember, left-handed thread. So righty, loosey, lefty, tighty. There we go, it's blowing really good. So problem fixed. Guys, well, that's it for today. Um, hopefully you guys learned something, you know, changing the fans on the uh, KA7EM rotisserie. Um, it's really not that hard of a job. The worst part about it is just having to take the whole top panel off. Um, you know, we went through the whole process of checking the capacitors, making sure the connections are good. And the fan, one fan was spinning slow, the other one wasn't spinning at all. Um, that we found the capacitor was good because there were 1.47, 1.48 microfarads points to being the fans. We placed fan motors, worked like a charm. Um, you know, just keep a few things in mind. Remember the, the nuts that hold the fan blades in place are left-handed threads. So, you know, it's lefty, uh, tidy, righty, loosey. Um, uh, make sure you're just going wire for wire when you're placing the wire and zip tie those wires together. Uh, but that's it guys, uh, hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, go ahead and hit that like button. Also, don't forget to uh, leave a comment if you got any questions or suggestions or anything like that down in the comment section. Also, don't forget to hit subscribe and click that bell for so that way you guys can get more and get notified about any good uh, training videos that may come out. With that guys, I'll talk to you later. Bye.